You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is color subtraction. Here's what we'd like to learn today. How does the interaction between light and the object that it shines upon affect the color appearance of the object? Let's get started. In our last video, we talked about the primary colors of light. These are the three colors of light that our eyes are most sensitive to, so we refer to them as the primary colors. When you mix them together in equal intensity, you get white light. But if you mix them together, just two of them in equal intensity, you'll get what we call secondary colors of light. Here's the rules. If you mix red light and green light, you get yellow light. Mixing red light and blue light in equal intensities give you magenta light, and mixing blue light and green light in equal intensities give you cyan light. Now if you mix all three of them in equal intensities, you get white light. So there's seven colors. There's an eighth color name to be talked about, and it's black. And black is simply the absence of all light. So eight colors in all is what we have on the screen. And we know, of course, there are millions of colors. But we just want to keep it simple and try to explain as much as we can with a simplified model that works with eight colors and rules of color addition and color subtraction. The color that an object appears depends upon the light colors that are incident upon the object, absorbed by the object, and reflected by the object. All three are important, and all three will be part of our model of why objects appear the color they appear. Incident light is the light that approaches the object, that lands up on its surface. Oftentimes it's white light, or Roy G. Biv light, or simply RGB light, but it doesn't have to be. The absorbed light is the light that the object absorbs, subtracts, or takes away. It will no longer be present once the object absorbs it. Objects absorb light and take it away from that which is incident upon them. Now whatever light is not absorbed can be reflected or bounced off the object. That's the light that comes to our eye. And whatever gets to our eye is processed by our brain and determines what color we associate with that object. Above me you see a color wheel. On the color wheel are three pairs of colors which we refer to as complementary color pairs. They're located directly across from one another. They are red and cyan, blue and yellow, and green and magenta. Here's the significance of complementary color pairs. They help us to predict what colors of light will be absorbed or subtracted by an object. So if you have red object, it's going to absorb cyan light, or simply blue and green light. If you have a blue object, it absorbs the color of light opposite of it, which is yellow light, or we can think of that as red and green light. And finally, a green object is going to absorb magenta light, or red and blue light. Now it works the opposite way as well. If a red object absorbs cyan light, then a cyan object would absorb red light. Similarly, a yellow object absorbs blue light, and a magenta object absorbs green light. That's how you can use complementary color prayers to predict what color of light an object would absorb. So let's use the incident absorbed reflected model and the color wheel in order to explain why certain objects look the color that they do. Let's start with blue jeans. Why do they look blue? They look blue when you shine white light upon them because blue objects absorb yellow light. In other words, they absorb the red and green light and take it away from the RGB that's landing on it. That leaves just one primary color of light remaining to reflect, and that's blue light. It reflects to our eyes, and our eye says, hey, I'm looking at blue jeans. If we were to write a color equation for this phenomenon, we would show R plus G plus B incident upon the blue jeans, and R plus G being subtracted by the blue jeans, which would equal one remaining color, blue that reflects to our eyes. Let's use the color wheel and the incident absorbed reflected model to explain why does a yellow banana look yellow. We'll begin with the incident light. It's white light again. R plus G plus B. It lands on the banana and the banana, why it's going to absorb or take away the blue light. So blue will no longer be available for reflecting but the red and green will reflect to the observer's eye, sending signals to the brain of that observer, which are interpreted to say, hey, I'm looking at a yellow banana.
If we were to write a color equation for this situation, we would start with the incident light colors, R plus G plus B. Then we would subtract the absorbed colors, minus B, and that would be equal to what's left, the two reflected colors, R plus G, which is equal to yellow. Let's use the color wheel and the incident absorbed reflected model to explain why does a cyan shirt look cyan. It begins with white light shining on the shirt. That's R plus G plus B. It hits the shirt and a cyan shirt will absorb red light. So red light has to get taken away. What's left is blue and green light. It gets reflected. It comes to the observer's eye. The brain gets the information and says, hey, you're wearing a cyan shirt. That's why a cyan shirt looks cyan. If we were to write a color subtraction equation for this situation, we'd start with R plus G plus B. Then we would go minus the absorbed color, minus R. And then we'd say that's equal to G plus B, which is equal to a cyan colored appearance. Here's our information intensive table that explains the color appearance of a variety of objects. So a few things you could do with this table. First, you could cover up the last column where it says appearance and see if you can predict the appearance of the objects if given the incident absorbed in reflected light colors. Now, I do want to point out something to you in the bottom two rows. You notice that we have black and white appearances. In the next to bottom row, the object's appearance is black. Objects that are perceived as black are absorbing all the light colors that land up on it and reflecting nothing to our eye. Black is thought of as the absence of all colors of light. Now, the bottom row shows an object that appears white. Objects that are white are reflecting all the colors of light to your eye. When RGB lands on it, it's not absorbing anything. It's reflecting all of it. That's the meaning of white and black in terms of color and light. So far, the incident light has always been white light, RGB light. But what if the incident light's not white light? Well, that's when things get interesting. Let's start with a yellow banana and shine magenta light on it. Magenta light is simply red plus blue light. It's shining on a yellow banana. And what yellow bananas do, like any yellow object does, is it absorbs blue light. So the blue light gets absorbed or taken away. What doesn't get absorbed is going to get reflected, and that's the red light, and this banana now looks red. Now let's take cyan light and shine it on the yellow banana. Cyan light is green and blue light, and when it shines on the yellow banana, the blue gets absorbed and taken away. And there's only one color left to be reflected, and that's green. Now the banana looks green. Finally, let's take yellow light and shine that on the banana. Yellow light is simply red plus green light, shining on a banana that can absorb blue, but only if blue is present. So the red and green are both going to get reflected to the eye of the observer, and now the banana looks yellow. Let's try this incident absorbed reflected model again, but this time let's apply it to a red apple. Now objects that are red can absorb cyan colored light or blue and green light whenever it's shining on the object. So let's start with a red apple and shine magenta light upon it. That is red plus blue light on an apple that can absorb blue light whenever it shines on it. The blue gets taken away, the red gets reflected, and the result is that red apple looks red. Now let's shine yellow light on our red apple, an apple that's capable of absorbing blue and green light whenever it's landing on the apple. But this time it's yellow light, red and green light shining on the apple. And an apple can absorb the blue light. It gets taken away, and it's the red that gets reflected to the observer's eye. The apple looks red again. Now let's shine cyan light on our apple. Red apples can absorb blue-green light, that is cyan light. So this time, the green and the blue light will both get absorbed, and nothing gets reflected. Nothing comes to your eye, and that apple now looks black. I've been talking color equations throughout this video. They're symbolic ways of representing the incident absorbed reflected model. Let's do a few more examples. Let's start with yellow light shining on a cyan paper. I list the incident light colors first. I do it in terms of primary colors of light. And yellow light is simply red plus green light. That comes first. 
Then I indicate what colors of light are being absorbed or taken away. Here, a cyan paper is a paper that can absorb red light. So I go minus red. To absorb means to subtract or take away. Then I do the math. And what's left when you start with red plus green and you go minus green, that's equal red. This is a sheet of paper that looks red. Another practice problem. Magenta light shines on a paper that's called red paper. Now the fact that it's magenta light means that the incident colors are red plus blue. And the fact that it is red paper means that it's going to absorb blue and green whenever blue and green land on it. And what we have here is blue light landing on it, so I go minus blue. That's the absorbed color. I always subtract it. Then you do the math. What's left over? Well, if you start with red and blue and then you take away the blue, you got red left over, that paper appears red. Now for our final example, let's shine cyan light on a sheet of paper that's called yellow paper. Cyan light is just green plus blue. Yellow paper absorbs blue, so I go minus blue, and then I do the math. Green plus blue minus blue, well that's equal to green. That's how you write color subtraction equations. Here's a final slide with a table having five different situations. You'll notice the incident column shows what primary colors of light are incident upon the object. The absorbed column is determined by what color the object is. So a magenta sheet of paper in the first row is going to absorb whatever colors are across from it, green light. The reflected column is done by doing the math. Whatever colors aren't absorbed get reflected, and the appearance column is simply what comes to the observer's eye. That's the reflected light. We can use a color wheel to determine the appearance once we know the reflected light colors. In the final column is the color equation. This is a great reference for you with five great examples. You might want to cover up the table and see if you can just read the situation and predict what the various columns would say. Hey, thanks for sticking around till the end. If you like this video and found it helpful, you could help us out by giving us a thumbs up or tapping on the bell and subscribing to our channel. Or if you wish, you can leave a question or comment down in the comment section below. Hey, we're not done helping you out though. I want to give you an action plan. If you look in the description section, you'll see several suggestions of next steps to help make this learning stick. So pick a suggestion or two and get started on our action plan. Good luck to you.